Today is all about how to teach your Doberman to have good manners and to behave, well, with a little civility. Ah, excellent tea. So, how was your day today? Ah, you went to the dog park again, you say? Really, you went inside? Well, I don't think you should be hanging around with those savages anyway, Mr. Arlo. Okay, well, your dog might not be joining you for tea time anytime soon, but hopefully with a few little tweaks to your daily interactions with your dog, you might be able to bring a little more civility into your home. So the first and probably the most critical way to help go about instilling manners in your Doberman is kind of a more of a broader habit that you should develop. And a lot of people skip this and it's so important. And that is teaching impulse control. Dogs in general are very instinctually driven, but Dobermans have the ability to be great thinkers before they act. Stay. And you really got to bring this out of your dog. If you do, and if you support this, um, then you're going to have so many fewer problems with your dog in your household, with training them commands, with leash okay. training them, with Good. everything you try and do. Good. Okay, so how do you get them to be a thinker before they act? Super simple, it's just a super simple trick. You ready for it? Here it is. Just get in the habit of asking them for something, even something small, before you give them something that they want. Let me give you an example. Uh, it's dinner time, great. Put their food bowl behind you, Ask them to do a few commands for you, to sit, to shake, to lay down, um, and then give them the release command, let them have their food. You're throwing a ball for them. Great, grab that ball before you throw it, have them sit, sit. have them uh, back up or turn around or shake or whatever commands you've been working on with them lately. Have them do one or two of them, even just one simple command like sit. Just have them do something before you give them what they want. Make that kind of your habit. Um, they come charging in through the door, they want to come in first. Nope, you're gonna have them sit and stay before you give them release command to come in the door. If you kind of get in the habit of this, they will learn to be a thinker before an actor and that is gonna pay off down the road just tenfold. All right, so the first specific behavior you want to instill in your Doberman um, is how to not eat human food when it's accessible. This is also called counter surfing. Oh man, this is a good one, guys. Now, a lot of trainers will just tell you, oh, just don't put human food out where they can get at it. Well, okay, but you can also train your dog to ignore your food if it is somewhere that they can get at it. It's a little bit hard because over thousands of years, dogs have naturally been scavengers, right? It's in their genetics. But again, Dobermans are thinkers. Um, so you can absolutely train a Doberman to ignore your full dinner plate of food out where they can get it and even leave the room. Yes, I know this is possible because my old Doberman Cooper was 100% trustworthy. I could leave our whole family's meal out on the coffee table if for whatever reason at night we decide to eat in front of the TV and, um, and leave the room and he wouldn't touch it. And I know many other Dobermans that are the same way. So this is absolutely possible and the way this is done is 80% through prevention, preventing the bad behavior and really only 20% of training what the good behavior is. Let's start with the 80% of this technique, which is really just how not to mess it up for yourself. And like many of the things I teach, um, start with a dog that's well exercised, mentally stimulated, um, well fed with a good nutritious diet. If you start with a dog with those four things down, you're gonna be in a way better position for teaching this behavior. Now the next thing that you wanna do is simply make sure you prevent this behavior, um, especially early on before they're trained with this, prevent them from jumping up on the counter and grabbing something off the counter, especially when they're young before they have this down. And yes, that does mean kind of keeping things out of reach, at least, at least initially before you can trust them. Because if they do that and they're successful at it, it's gonna be a huge reward for them. And um, it's really gonna reinforce that behavior down the road you're gonna be working against yourself. Now, the next thing is to just, um, and remember this phrase, keep human food weird. Keep human food weird to your dog. Don't give them the taste of human food. Don't get them used to human food. Um, one thing a lot of people mess up on here is giving them scraps from the table. That's one of the worst things you can do because not only does it give them the taste of human food, but you're doing it from your dinner table at your dinner time. And that is just, that's gonna set you back a lot with this behavior. Um, it's gonna be so hard to train it out of them later. Um, the next thing you can do is make sure you always keep their dinners 
in their dinner bowl, in their eating spot, the same spot every time. These dogs love routine. Um, make eating outside the bowl weird for them. Uh, these are the main things that you can do that will help really reinforce this behavior and making the last 20%, um, the training part of this, go way smoother. Okay, now the 20% of this is really the teaching them this behavior through some training sessions. Um, it's pretty easy to do. It's basically a glorified leave it command. Now, if, you, if your dog's not too good on the leave it command or you don't know how to train your dog with leave it command, take a look at the video. It should be popping up in the corner of your screen. I did a video all about how to teach your Doberman to listen to your commands. And in that, I do talk specifically about the leave it command and how to start with that and progress with that. So once your dog has a basic understanding of leave it, um, start doing that command and practicing that uh, in a room where some human food is left down low where they can get at it. Um, a coffee table, an ottoman, something like that. Um, and start just kind of by hovering really closely to make sure your dog doesn't get that food. Give them the leave a command. When they pause and they kind of look at it and they don't act on it, give them a treat, praise and reward like crazy. Now, next time, try to do it by backing up a little bit further and the same thing, if they pause and they're thinking and they're not acting, give them the, the treat, praise and reward. Uh, keep practicing this until your dog gets better and better and you can keep backing up further and further until eventually you're at the edge of the room or even outside the room. Um, and the biggest thing, the biggest recommendation I give you is just go really slow and be careful here. This is like high stakes training because if you mess it up even once, the dog's gonna plow their face right into that plate of human food, get the taste of human food, learn to love it and you're going to set yourself back three steps and you're going to have to rewind a whole bunch and start all over with this and it's going to be a lot more difficult now some people prefer instead to teach their dog to go to bed and to stay there um, so like go to bed lay down stay and their beds on the other side of the room while they're eating you could do that if you want i just haven't had as much success with that as i have uh, with this approach but um this is absolutely doable with dobermans uh, i've seen it many times and it's actually Pretty cool to have a dog that'll leave your food alone. Now the next behavior you're probably gonna wanna instill in your dog to make sure they have good manners is to just make sure they don't jump up on you after coming home from a long day of work or something else. Um, it's very natural for them to jump up on you. You know, it's really instinctually for them because uh, they're used to greeting other dogs face to face and that's normal for them. So really they're just trying to greet you face to face. Well, how do we prevent this? Well, this is one of those ones that takes a little bit of correction along with the positive reinforcement. Uh, so here's what I do as an example. When I come in through the door and my dog's about to jump, I put out my hand about this level here and I say a firm, no jump. I don't use no, I don't use down, I don't use off as my command. I make a whole separate command, no jump, so it doesn't get confused. I have my hand about here so that if he jumps up, it hits my hand and it's really uncomfortable for him. He really doesn't want to jump up uh, if my hand is at that level where his nose is going to hit it. Um, and also, I start to walk towards him a little bit. This kind of makes him shuffle a little bit off balance and it makes the whole process of jumping on me just really uncomfortable overall. Then I ignore him for a few seconds. If he stopped, I will then ask him to sit and stay. And once he does that, then I'll give him the praise he's asking for. Now you should start off by teaching this technique uh, with some dedicated training sessions, having some treats with you to really drive home the positive reinforcement portion of this when you actually go to pet them and reward them. Do it with a treat also if they've actually done the sit and the stay like you've asked. But you know, of course, I don't expect you to have treats every time you come home from work. So on normal days when you come home from work, just get in the habit of making sure you do these whole steps and you use the praise as a great reward at the end of it. Um, but it's okay if your dog starts getting sloppy with the jumping thing to really reinforce it with a dedicated training session with some treats. I look at it like a dam, right? You build a dam, sometimes it springs a leak every now and then and you gotta reinforce it by, okay, sitting down with some dedicated training sessions, a pocket full of treats and just run through this practice over and over. But this is how uh, you go about teaching this technique and it's a great one to have a dog that doesn't jump on you. Oh, and guys, maturity plays a big role here in this one as well. As your dog gets older, they're gonna be a lot better about not jumping. Just make sure you're consistent with the training in the meantime and you'll do great. Now the next behavior to train is stopping at a threshold of a door and letting you go in first. This is really important. Uh, it really drives home the point that you're the rule maker of the house or the alpha of the house and it's so important to have your dog um, used to this, especially if you have an overly headstrong or dominant Doberman. If you do, this will make a big difference in a lot of other behaviors once they get this down. Um, you should start teaching this also pretty young. My subscribers probably noticed that Arlo had a handle on this in some of my other videos, you can see it, um, from a really young age. Um, 
couple weeks after I brought them home from the breeder. So in order to do this, they should have a good handle on the sit and the stay command and a release command so that they know they're done with what you're asking uh, of them to do. So first time what you want to do, start to go into the house, tell them to stay. They're not going to, they're probably going to ignore you, especially if they're a young pup grab them and hold them back by the collar, whatever you got to do until all the humans are inside the house. Then you go in and turn around, put your hand up in front of their nose and say, stay and uh, try if they have a good handle on stay command to get them to pause a few seconds, then give them the release command pretty quickly. So they come in the house, praise and reward them. Um, more than likely the first handful of times, at least that you do this, they're going to try and ignore you and just come bounding in, keep stay. putting them back and put your hand up, stay, back up, back up. they'll come bounding in, put stay. them back. You might have to do this. I, with Arlo, I did it probably 15 times stay. the first time um, until he finally hesitated a little bit with the stay. Then I quickly gave him the release Good command boy. and praised him. As time goes by, you know, set the bar a little bit higher. Ask him to stay for a few more seconds or back up and ask him to stay. Or if you get really good, and Arlo can do this now, have him stay and just sit there and look around the room. Don't even give him your attention for a minute or two and then say, okay, and they'll come bounding in. Stay. Okay, good boy, good boy, yes, good boy. Really the best thing you can do is just get into some good habits with how you interact with your dog throughout the day to reinforce some of these behaviors. If you've gotten some good habits on reinforcing these things, your dog's gonna have great habits with how he interacts with your family. Um, consistency is key here. Guys, um, these have been kind of a quick crash course on some of these behaviors. Certainly these things go in a little more in depth than I've talked about here. So if you run into some roadblocks along the way, it could be useful researching the specific behavior you're having problems with a little bit further because there are more advanced techniques you can do to address some of the common issues that come up. Uh, if you've enjoyed anything about this video, uh, maybe you'll enjoy something about the next one. So make sure you're subscribed down below and hit that little bell icon that comes up next to it. I'd really appreciate it. And hey, if you have any good techniques or methods uh, to train some of these behaviors in your dogs, leave it in the comments down below. Maybe you'll help out some other people. And really, I would love it if this video became kind of a running brainstorm session in the comments section down below on uh, different techniques and methods to approach some of these things. So share your knowledge with everybody, help someone else out, and I will see you guys next time. Oh yes, that uh, intro in that video was certainly outlandish as well. I remember that. Mm. Arlo was certainly out of sorts when we filmed that video as well. That crazy Arlo. <laughs> oh yes, that was a good one.